The year was 2016. While the Wii U was busy doing the whole failure thing, Nintendo was thinking of some other ways to make money. They decided to go about this in the form of mobile gaming. <laughs> Is Nintendo able to compete with the thousands of other mobile game companies? Or are they better off developing games on their own hardware? Well today, we're gonna figure that out because I'll be taking a look at some of the mobile games made by Nintendo. The first game I'll be looking at is Super Mario Run. I actually got the game back when it first came out, and the way you pay for it is interesting. The game is free, but you only have access to the first world. You can buy the rest of the game by paying for it, which is treated as if it was DLC. The general idea of the game isn't too hard to grasp. It's Mario, but on a phone. And of course, the main gimmick is that he runs automatically, which allows for easier platforming. Not like it was originally hard, but hey, make it easier. There are three game modes, Tour, Rally, and Remix 10. However, at launch there is only two game modes. The first game mode is Tour, and this one you could spend $14 to get access to 20 levels. Okay, let me just do the math real quick. Oh! That's bad! This is made even worse when you consider that each level is finished in under a minute. With levels so short, it has to have some sort of replayability, right? And it does. Sort of. In each level, you can collect five pink coins. If you get all of them, you can get purple coins. Do that, and you get green coins. In my opinion, it doesn't really work, though. I don't really feel a need to collect all 15 coins for each and every level. I feel like this game really could have benefited from a challenge mode. Like, maybe you have to jump a certain amount of times, or do X amount of wall jumps. But instead, they just threw in some coins and called it a day. And after beating Bowser, I really don't feel a need to return to this game mode. You could play as different characters, but the levels are still the same. There are also the other game modes, Toad Rally and Remix 10. But they both feel like bonuses rather than actual game modes. In Toad Rally, you play through pre-existing levels, but do tricks and spins and stuff to get the Toad's attention. And in Remix 10, you play through a bunch of micro-courses. Overall, Mario Run's getting a no from me. It has a ton of content when you consider it's just a mobile game, and the gameplay loop can be surprisingly addicting and fun. But that all starts to fall apart when you realize you're spending $14 to access the full game. Like, hell, that's more expensive than Minecraft! So the next game we'll be looking at is Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. I'm gonna start this part of the review by saying that Animal Crossing is a series where you don't usually just sit down and beat it. A traditional review doesn't really work to capture the appeal of the game. But I don't care on with the review. Animal Crossing. You make a guy. He looks like he's seen some shit. Oh no. Oh, hi, Isabel. <laughs> the fuck you just tell me to do, Birdman? Yeah, I got those apples for you, man. Yeah, this game's boring. Look, I'm sorry if you happen to like this series, but it's really not my cup of tea. Light sims are honestly one of my least favorite genres, and that's just due to the fact that there's never anything fun to do. And when there is something to do, besides tapping the screen and letting characters ramble on for 14 years, it's something incredibly mundane like fishing, which in and of itself has a lot of waiting. I'm not joking when I tell you the most engaging this game ever got for me was in the loading screen, because there's a little mini-game where you could jump and collect coins. Again, sorry if you like this game, but it's just not my thing. The next game we'll be looking at is Pokemon Go. This game came out five months before Mario Run, and had a much bigger impact on pop culture. So much, in fact, that Hillary Clinton referenced it in the 2016 election. Pokemon go to the polls! Not only did it take the world by storm, but it also got people to go outside? And since Pokemon Go can't be played without leaving the house, I'll be... ...going outside. Remember kids, don't be like this guy, cause that guy is a loser. Time to catch some Pokemon! Pop, pop, 
I'm not playing Minecraft Earth, I swear! You see, the joke is actually that the funny man says he's gonna play Pokemon Go, but in reality, you see him playing Minecraft Earth. Let's go find some Pokemon! <laughs> <laughs> Pikachu! Where are you? Now the joke here is... <laughs> okay, no more funny time. The gameplay loop is simple. The biggest goal in the game is to catch as many Pokemon as you can. Huh? And to find them, you have to be out and about and running around. But to catch Pokemon, you need Pokeballs. You get them by SPENDING MONEY! Or you can get them for free by going to Pokestops, which are basically just landmarks that give you stuff. You could also spin the ball and throw it at the Digimon to catch it, which is pretty silly. There's also gyms, but they're scary. And that might be because I got my ass kicked earlier. So yeah, Pokemon Go has quite a bit of content. And unlike Mario Run, you could play the entire game for free. The only problem is that if you want to keep playing it, you're eventually probably going to end up spending money. The next game we'll be looking at is Dr. Mario World. So this game actually has some really deep and complex lore. Viruses have invaded everywhere. Both the Toads and Bowser's minions have been sent into a panic. Hunt down the viruses and save everyone. Unlike Dr. Mario, where it's just one level that goes on infinitely long, Dr. Mario World has a leveling system. However, all the levels are basically the same. You just have to kill all the viruses. There are also a few gameplay and UI changes that separate this game from every other Dr. Mario. Stuff like having the pills come from the bottom of the screen and being able to vary how fast or slow they move makes the game feel so much more responsive. That added bit of control actually makes this my favorite Dr. Mario game. And when combined with the low level of difficulty, it makes this a pretty enjoyable experience. But unfortunately, because it's a Nintendo mobile game, they had to find a way to shoehorn in microtransactions. Luckily, the microtransactions only go towards cosmetics, and not actual important parts of the game. These cosmetics come in the form of new characters. Because if I could have anyone doing my heart surgery, I would obviously want Dr. Baby Luigi to do it. Anyways, let me just sign my will real quick. Overall, Dr. Mario World was a good game all around. Who would have guessed that puzzle games were good on mobile? The last game we'll be looking at is Mario Kart Tour. I actually reviewed this game back when it first came out. You know it was a good review because it has this. Clearly I made the best content back in September 2019. Gameplay-wise, Mario Kart Tour hasn't aged a bit, and that's to say, it plays like a mobile kart racer released in 2019. The new game mechanic in this one is the Frenzy feature. Basically, if you roll the same item three times, then you get an unlimited amount of that item for a short period of time. Which means, you SAM! And, just like every other modern Mario Kart game, you could still drift and trick. Because this is a smaller Mario Kart game, all the races only have two laps. So currently, the game seems pretty fine and dandy. And that's true. However, just like every other Nintendo mobile game, they had to find some way to throw in microtransactions. And unfortunately, it's in the form of a pay-to-win loot box. Basically, you get advantages on certain stages by having certain characters. And, unless you're really, really, really lucky, you're definitely not getting the best character for every level. So you could either play with a disadvantage, or spend a lot of money on the game. But don't worry, all the problems are solved, because now you could buy 10 at once! Yeah, the microtransactions somewhat ruined Mario Kart Tour. However, I wouldn't say it's as bad as Mario Run, because you don't have to pay $15 just to play the game. In my opinion, the biggest ongoing problem with Nintendo's mobile games is the scummy business practices. To be more specific, the fact that everything's overpriced. Which perfectly fits for the way I, and many other people, see Nintendo as a whole. They make some really great games and have the best exclusives out of all the consoles. 
but they have some really scummy business practices, like the dreaded Switch tax, which is where a game costs more money just because it's on the Switch. For example, you could buy Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze for $20 on the Wii U because of Nintendo Selects. Yet for some reason, the Switch re-releases a full 60. I guess that new funky mode is worth $40 on its own. Anyways, this is the end of the video now, goodbye.